Hello everyone and welcome to the webinar. Today's topic is the Memory Palace system, also known as the loci or the journey system. And loci is also pronounced as low-key. Um, I see it most commonly pronounced as loci, but we're going to use the Memory Palace system. That loci word it comes from a, from a Latin word meaning location. And you're going to see exactly what we mean by location in just a moment, but thank you so much for attending today's webinar. It's one part in our uh, series, our memory improvement course series, so thanks again for attending. Let's get right into what exactly is a memory palace. For those of you that aren't already familiar, a memory palace, the system is based on the assumption that people best remember familiar locations. Therefore, these locations can serve as clues to remember information associated with them. Now, to use this method effectively, all you need to do is link something that you want to remember with the location. And that location could be in your memory palace. And a memory palace, by the way, could be a home. It could be um, any other familiar location. Most people use their home. Uh, but when you want to recall the information, you simply remember the information where you put it. Now, let's go into a little more de detail here because this, is, this method is also known as the method of loci or the journey method. Um, the method dates back, the method of the memory palace actually dates back. Um, it's one of the oldest uh, memory strategies out there. It dates back to 500 BC. And even then, it was even around uh, as it went through time, it would be taught um, in traditional school curriculum for many years before, before the modern era, of course. Um, it's now some people ask me, well, why, why isn't it, you know, taught anymore? Keep in mind, it used to be, um, it used to be more important to remember things. For example, think of like before you had the printing press. How would people tell stories? They had to memorize stories. They had to remember. A lot of stories started off as you know just oral stories. Um, later, they got printed. Um, how did people remember these things? So there was a time where. It was very important to remember things, and you know you had these memory systems, such as the one we're going to talk about today, that would pop up. Now, as you came into the modern era and you had the printing press, and now we have computers, we've got lots of ways that we can store information rather than memorize it. So um, you can almost say that we've gotten maybe intellectually lazy. Um, but I think this is something that should be taught because there are situations, and it's probably why that you're here in this webinar right now. There are situations where you need to commit something to memory, and these kind of strategies are extremely useful if you know how to use them. Now, this uh, method of loci, or the memory palace, um, it's said to have been discovered by the ancient Greek poet Simonides. Um, the first mention of this method was recorded in an ancient pamphlet called the Rhetoric Ad Herinium. Um, now, this legend was passed on by ancient, the ancient Roman philosopher Cicero, who wrote about this memory technique during his lifetime. Um, in his lifetime, it was around 100 BC. The Discovery of this technique actually occurred at a banquet hall. The story, so, the story goes that Simonides was at this dinner with a number of important Greek nobles and thinkers, and luckily for Simonides, he stepped out for a few moments when the roof of the building collapsed and it crushed all the diners inside of that building. Um, Simonides was the only survivor and was able to identify each of the victims by matching them to their position, or locus, at the table. Because he was able to remember everyone's name by visualizing where they had been sitting, he realized that a person's memory probably could be improved by associating mental images of locations for each per item to be remembered. The loci system or memory palace was used as a uh, mental tool by the ancient Greek and Roman orators. They used this to take advantage of the technique um, to speak without notes. Um, they would visualize objects to represent different topics they wanted to discuss, and then they would mentally place those objects or ideas in different locations within a building. And the building was known as a memory palace. So that's why we're going to use the term memory palace rather than uh, loci. Now, as an orator would speak, he would mentally move through the building, retrieving these imaginary objects which represented ideas or thoughts from each location as he came to it. So the memory, palace was, uh, the memory palace was popular until probably the mid-1600s um, when other strategies like the link or the peg systems were introduced. Now, I want you to know, although that this is, a, this is a pretty ancient method, there's a lot of research in the field of neuroscience that shows how and why this memory technique works so well. Um, in a classical study in cognitive neuroscience, John O'Keefe and Lynn Natal they proposed that the hippocampus is the core of the neural memory system, providing an objective spatial framework 
within which items or events of a person's experience are located and interrelated. So the hippocampus is basically this place where we've got our short-term memory, our long-term memory, our spatial memory. And it's been determined that the hippocampus underpins our ability to navigate, to recollect different memories, and to even imagine future experiences. Now here, here's a quote from, from that study. It says, we found that superior memory is not driven by exceptional intellectual ability or structural brain differences. Rather, we found that superior memorizers used a spatial learning strategy while preferentially engaging brain regions critical for memory and for spatial memory in particular, including the hippocampus. The spatial uh, learning strategy they were referring to, by the way, was the memory palace system, or the uh, they were calling it in the study the method of loci. And by the way, if you want to look up that source of the study, the paper's name was The Hippocampus as a Cognitive Map. Um, it was published by Oxford University Press, written by John O'Keefe and Lynn Nadel. Now, the basic idea that neuroscience has been able to confirm is that our brains are really good at remembering things visually and spatially. And the memory palace system takes advantage of both your visual memory, your ability to locate things spatially. Actually, you can think about it like this. Have you ever been to a place just one time, but you can kind of recall in, in pretty good detail where things were, general locations? Um, sometimes these are places you've only been to a handful of times. Now, obviously, a place like your home, you're very, very intimately aware of a lot of detail. But human beings, even when they only go to a place once or twice or a few times, they're able to tell, you know, okay, maybe, maybe it was someone's home that you only went to one time. You probably remember where the bathroom was maybe where the living room was, where the kitchen was. And we're really good at remembering our spatial memory. This is uh, sometimes, I know I've had this experience when I uh, travel to a city where I've never been. Initially, I have no clue where I'm going because I've never been there. But as I start walking around the city, I'm able to easily find my way back to where I came from. So, for example, uh, what I like to do when I visit new cities is, uh, you know, when I get out of the hotel, I just walk in whatever direction feels natural. I just start walking around. I'm walking all over the city. And then I'm a very easily to reconstruct my way back because I've been keeping track of it in a very visual and a spatial way. So human beings are very, very good at this. So here's what we need to do to create our memory palace. We need a familiar place and a vivid imagination. The memory palace system is easy to learn and it works really well for people who are very good at visualizing. And if you're not good at visualizing, you will be with just a little bit of practice. And actually, we'll practice that today. And the more you practice visualizing things, the better you get at it. And hey, I know that uh, you know little kids a lot of times are very good at you know visualizing things and imagination. And if for some reason, as we as we get older, our imagination starts to kind of deteriorate. But I want you to know, it doesn't mean that it's lost forever. You can build it back up. It's just that you know the way society is, it kind of kind of gets us into a position where um, you know having a silly imagination is no longer uh, no longer acceptable or something. But it can be very useful with your memory. So I want you to know that. So first, you need to choose a place that you know very well. For a lot of people, this is going to be their home. So that's what we're going to use as an example today. Um, because you're intimate, intimately aware of various locations within it. So you know where your kitchen is, your living room, your dining room, closets, all of that stuff. Now, the next step is to visualize a series of locations in a logical order. So not just moving around your house in a random way. Where would we start? You should probably start at the front door. Okay, so that's what we're going to be starting off with in this uh, exercise. And by the way, this exercise we're going to do, I need you to kind of uh, pay attention and make sure that you're visualizing the information that we're going to uh, present in a moment. Now, once you get through the front door, here, here's basically the process of this uh, memory palace. You get Once you get through the front door, you walk through your home in a specific route. So you might walk, let's say, through the front door, down the hall, turn into the living room, proceed through the dining room, and then into the kitchen. Okay, so you have this certain kind of a route that you would always follow. All right, now as you enter each lo location, so for example, a living room or a bedroom, you need to make sure that you move logically and consistently in the same direction. So that direction could be from one side of the room to the other, or it could be clockwise or counterclockwise. Just make sure that you always keep that movement um, through each location consistent for the future. That's going to help in remembering things in order. Now, 
you need to pick certain items within each room that you can easily recall. So um, you can pick things like the sofa, the TV, the refrigerator, um, a closet, or any other items that are within each room. Now these items will be useful later on. And also keep in mind that each piece of furniture or architectural element in a, in a home can be used as an additional location. Now when you want to remember information, um, you need to associate each piece of, piece of information in order, in, in, or, in the order that it's remembered um, within that location of the room. So um, when I say associate each piece of information in the order, this is going to help you to remember things in order later when you need to recall them. So um, this information that you need to remember could be anything. Um, so basically, you're put, let's say you've got um, a grocery list and you're putting items in certain places, or maybe it's uh, thoughts um, for a speech that you have to give or a presentation. Um, you're putting whatever information, those items, you're putting them in certain locations within your memory palace, within your home. Okay. Now, if uh, let's say that you've got to remember some really abstract concept. So when I say remember a speech or remember what you read, you know, sometimes you could have some abstract things that aren't easy to visualize, but what you need to do is visualize them in some kind of a tangible way. Um, so that way you could place them in different locations within your home. So we talked about this in other, uh, in other webinars. So sometimes you have uh, abstract information and for example, let's say uh, you have the word justice. What you can visualize is maybe a judge. Or if you have uh, the idea of, let's say, liberty, well, you can picture um, the Liberty Bell, okay? Or maybe you have something, maybe one concept is like happiness. Happiness is not something easy to visualize unless you visualize it as maybe a sun that's smiling, okay? So make sure that you visualize whatever it is you need to visualize and into a concrete object or item, and you place those items in different areas of your memory palace, so, for example, let's say you need to remember a grocery list, just for a quick example. As you visualize the front door, and I want you to visualize this right now. Um, here, here's what I want you to visualize. Imagine walking to your front door, and there is printer paper plaster, plastered all over your front door. So, this is going to help us remember the first item on this list. So, to do this, you really need to see the paper. So, picture pure white sheets of 8.5 by 11, you know, printing paper, pasted all over your oak door. Now, open the door, and again, visualize this. I want you to open the door and enter through the hallway, and there you see a huge onion in the middle of the hallway. Now, the onion has a face on it, it's just as tall as you, and for some reason it's angry, and you have to fight this onion before going through the hall. So, also, if your eyes get watery around onions, you might, might want to imagine that stinging feeling that you get. Um, from onions. Now that visualization is going to help us remember item number two. Okay, onions. Now once you've once you've defeated this big onion, you're now entering the living room. Okay, there you're going to see a six foot carrot wearing a sombrero um, standing on your couch, or maybe it's jumping up and down on your couch, and you're angry that it's jumping up and down on your couch, getting it all dirty. That's going to help us remember carrots. So we've walked through the door with the printer paper pasted all over it. We had to fight a big onion in the middle of the hallway, and now we've encountered in the living room a giant, you know, a carrot the same size as us jumping up and down on our couch. Okay, now, while we're in the living room sitting in a chair next to the fireplace, I want you to imagine a Big Mac, and it's licking an ice cream cone. So try to picture that. What would a Big Mac licking an ice cream cone look like? Think about that for a moment. And remember that the Big Mac is sitting next to the fireplace in your living room while eating that ice cream cone. Now, that is going to help us remember hamburger and ice cream. Okay. So, just to recap, let's recap this whole visualization for a moment. You, are walk, you walk through to the front door, and you see paper plastered all over the door. And then you enter the hallway, and you're, you have to fight a giant onion. And then you enter the living room and you see a carrot jumping up and down on your couch wearing a sombrero. And then you remember seeing a Big Mac sitting next to the fireplace eating an ice cream. Okay, now, you can use this method for a variety of lists, or even speeches, maybe names, things to do. I like to use this strategy when I'm reading to recall the various ideas that were presented. Um, 
I turn those ideas into visuals and I place those within the memory palace so I can remember them later on. Now it could even be just a quick thought that you want to remember later in the day. For example, if you're, let's say you're at work and you want to remember to tell your friend about a funny story um, about your next door neighbor's cat, you can simply picture a cat doing something silly in your living room. Okay, now later on when you're talking to your friend and you want to remember that story, all you got to do is go back to your memory palace, walk through your home, visualize your living room, and the image of the cat will come back almost instantaneously. And also keep in mind that you can have more than one memory palace. Your other memory palaces can be used for other things that you need to remember. So let's say you're studying for two or three different courses. You could, have, you could use different memory palaces for different courses. And... So you could use maybe your uh, parents' house, a friend's house, or maybe even your workplace. Or maybe it's a route that you take to work. Uh, maybe it's a driving route, or maybe you take the train to work. Any place that you're intimately familiar with will work perfectly. Now, let's get back to that shopping list. I wanted to take a moment for you to, to see if we'll forget the list. Let's see if you can remember it. Can you remember... What, what happened when you walked into your home? Actually, start, start at the front door. Now, I'm going to give you a quick 30 seconds to remember that visualization, that little story that we put together earlier. Try to see if you can remember all the items. So walk up to your door and tell me what you see. Or maybe, maybe not telling me. You're not going to exactly tell me here because we're not. But think about it. I'm going to give you a moment, and I'll pick up in a, about 30 seconds. Think about what you remember seeing and see if you can remember all the items. Okay, now here's that grocery list again. If we wanted, we could expand this easily to 20 or more items. Um, keep in mind, and here's what I mean by 20 more items. Keep in mind, we only entered the house, went through the hallway, and then went into the living room. That's only three locations. Door, hallway, and living room. How many other locations do you have in your home? I mean, I'm sure there are a lot more. You can count the bathrooms, uh, the bedrooms, the kitchen, the basement, the attic. Um, or maybe any other areas outside of your home, surrounding your home. Maybe you, if you have a patio or a yard or a garage, all of those areas can be used as part of your memory palace. Now, the memory palace works so well because humans are very good at spatial memory and remembering visuals. Um, it allows you to use familiar locations to cue yourself to remind you of things you need to recall. Now, this system alters the way you remember things in a very effective way. Because, because the locations are organized in a very natural order, one memory easily leads you to the next, and it drags with it whatever information you attach to that location. Now, you can enlarge this system, as I mentioned, by adding other buildings that you know very well. Um, again, it could be someone's house, it could be someone else's house, it could be your office or maybe your school or any other location that's easy for you to recall. Now, some people even use parts of their body as their memory palace, um, starting from head to toe. So if you're taking care of yourself because you feel that your body is a temple, well, now it's time to turn your body into your memory palace. Now, you can use locations within locations to help you remember even more items. So this is how you can really expand your memory palace to remember a bunch of things. For example, when you enter your living room, you can place something on the couch, something on the chair, another item on or in the fireplace if you wanted, and so on and so forth. It's possible actually to remember, let's say you had 50 items that you had to remember. You could put five items in each of the 10 different areas of your home. So five could go in the living room, another five in your bedroom, another five in the kitchen, five more in the basement, five on the patio, five on the yard, and so on. So you can keep going with all of the places in your home, and you could really remember a lot of things. Now, years ago, it used to be advised that uh, your locations within the memory palace should be well-spaced. I want you to know that uh, research has actually shown that it's more important for the different locations to be visually distinct. So obviously, you know, the different locations like your, uh, you know, the couch is different than the fireplace and the TV and so on. Um, or the living room is obviously a lot different than uh, 
you know, your kitchen looks different. Um, it's also very important to form a very strong association between the item and its location. So having the item interact with its location in some compelling way can work out really well. For example, earlier, remember we pictured ourselves fighting with a big onion, okay? And, or the interaction of the onion, maybe it was making our eyes kind of teary. Okay, that's another way to interact. Um, we also pictured a Big Mac interacting with an ice cream cone by eating it. Okay, so just picturing that interaction, what would it look like, a, a Big Mac eating an ice cream cone? Now, one of the best uh, known examples of a person who had a remarkable memory was uh, this Russian newspaper reporter. Um, his name was Sherashevsky. Now, I'm probably not pronouncing that perfectly, but he's usually just referred to as S. Now, his life was documented in the 1968 book um, by this neuropsychologist named Alexander Luria. Um, and this book was published in 1968. Um, the name of the book was The Mind of a Mnemonist. And Luria wrote about S, who appeared to have... He, he's kind of been, he was kind of born with a memory that just seemed limitless. Um, the author would ask S to recall a list that he had given S many years ago. And S would recall, first recall that at the time... The, the author, Luria, had been wearing like a gray shirt. Then he would re recall the entire list. So he could remember not just the list, but the entire experience of when he was told to remember that list. And he could describe any scene from his mind's eye almost perfectly because he said he, said he was able to see the person before, before him in an almost like hallucinatory detail. Um, now it was clear that S went about the task of uh, memorizing things a little differently than most people. If he was given a series of numbers, he could say he would see the numbers in his mind. Now, the memory palace system was often used by S. When he would read through a long series of words, each word would elicit some kind of a graphic image. And since the series was fairly, fairly long, he had, he had to find some ways of distributing those images in a, in a mental sequence. So most often, he would put them on some kind of a roadway or a street or in a neighborhood or in a home, and he would visualize this in his head. So I want you to know that this, this memory pa palace system is a very, very powerful technique. Now, what I want you to do to kind of reemphasize, because we just went over a very quick... Um, very quick list here. And I want you to see right now if you could remember it. You know, a few minutes ago we recalled it. Think about right now. Can you remember you started at the front door? And what do you remember plastered on the front door? And then go on from there and move through the hallway. What do you remember seeing there? And then move back into the living room. And what do you remember seeing in the living room? And if you could remember those those items that we discussed. It's usually because you created some kind of visuals, and we could have we could have kept going. We could have done you know 10, 20, 30, um, or more items. What I want you to try and do is to actually practice this information. I want you to practice using a memory palace system to remember some kind of information, and I want you to try, think of this as like unofficial homework. Try to do this once a day for two weeks. Now you can do this on a grocery list. You can try doing this on a task list of things that you have to do. Or what I like to do is I like to try this out on uh, things that I read. So let's say you're reading an article or maybe a chapter in your book. After you're done, maybe, maybe think about the seven different things that were covered or the five things that were covered. Or maybe there were ten things that were covered. And see if you could place those visuals, those items, or whatever those thoughts or ideas were. Put them in your memory palace. So the first step is really decide what the memory palace is going to be. Make sure that you pick a certain kind of a route. So maybe you always go through your memory palace. You enter through the front door. And then, you know, for me, my memory palace is I, uh, I enter through the front, front door. And my two dogs usually almost always greet me at the front door. They're barking and they, you know, they're jumping towards me. So I try to use the dogs in some kind of a way. And then usually I put my bag down in the living room. And then I walk over, you know, and say hi to my wife in the kitchen maybe or wherever she is. Um, and, and you can just kind of go from there. So you pick a certain kind of a route that's just standard. And maybe you don't have a certain standard route that you always go through, but you can make one up and make sure that you're always putting things in the same order. That's good. The reason why you want to do it in order is because if you ever need to remember information in a very specific order, that is going to help you to memorize the information very, very easily. And if you can try this out on a different thing every single day, the other reason I want you to do it is because you'll see that you can reuse your memory palace for different things. So you can use it one day for a grocery list, another day for your to-do list, another day it could be used for uh, 
maybe something you need to remember from what you read. Um, I wouldn't try to use the memory palace for two things that you have to remember at the same time. Let's say you had um, two final exams going on tomorrow. You don't want to use the same memory palace for both of those exams. I would use one memory palace, which was, let's say, let's say it's my home for one test, and another me memory palace, maybe it's my parents' home, for another test. And placing those idea, uh, those concepts that I have to remember in different palace places in the palace. And uh, what happens is once you remember the item, you'll remember, oh yeah, that was the part in this chapter about blah, blah, blah. And, and it's easy to recall the information. So make sure that you're practicing this because this is once you get the hang of it, you'll notice that you'll, you'll get to situations where you're, you're like, okay, I got to remember something. How am I going to do it? You've got this tool called a memory palace and you know how to use it. And now you can utilize that tool. But in order for this information to really sink in, you've got to practice it. And actually, if you're listening to this today, maybe practice it right now. Once this webinar is over, try to apply this right away to see how effective it is in remembering a certain amount of things. So with that, I want to thank you for attending today's webinar. I really hope you found it helpful. If you have additional questions about the Memory Palace, feel free to get in touch with me directly by email. You could also catch up with me on LinkedIn, on Facebook, or on Twitter. Um, and I want to thank you for checking out this webinar. Um, this is one webinar in our memory improvement course. And Thank you so much for supporting this program. We're, re we're a relatively small organization based here in Chicago, but we've done our workshops for um, many different companies and schools. We've done this for employees of Google. We've done this at uh, for employees of NASA. A few months ago we did it there. I was really excited about that workshop. And we've also done this at Ivy League schools that include Harvard and many others. So if you want to invite us, if you're a student at, at a school, it um, doesn't have to be an Ivy League school. You want to invite us to your school, feel free to get in touch. Or if you want to invite us to your company to do some kind of a seminar on either uh, memory training or speed reading, we'd be happy to feel free to get in touch with me or, or our support team at IRIS. But again, thank you so much for coming out, supporting this program, and enjoy the rest of your day.